Hi there, everyone. Um, hopefully you can you can hear me and thanks very much for joining uh, the webinar today. Um, so as you can see on your screen, the webinar is going to run for approximately about 45 minutes. Um, everyone has been put on mute just to avoid any background noise. However, if you do have any questions um, at any time, you can you know, put these in via the Q&A panel. Um, this webinar is also being recorded um, and will be circulated back to you. So the webinar today is obviously all around streamlining your pre-accounting processes with Basecone, uh, which is our purchase invoice and expense software from Walters Kluwer. So my name's Callum. Um, I'm obviously your speaker today. And my role here is part of the digital team. So it's my role to help accountancies and SMEs with their move to cloud technology and digital solutions. Uh, this is a with a particular focus around Twinfield, which is our bookkeeping software, and also Basecone, which we will be looking at today. And we'll also be looking into how Basecone integrates with Twinfield, as well as other bookkeeping software such as Xero. So what are we going to actually be looking at today? So first and foremost, it's gonna be an introduction to digital document automation. There's gonna be an overview of the key features within Basecone and also how it integrates with the accounting software. So as I mentioned, Twinfield and Xero. It does also link with Exact, um, but we won't be showing that today. And then also some tips and tricks so you can hit the ground running and also some Q&A at the end. So what are you trying to achieve with Basecone? So first and foremost, it's real-time processing. So as accountants, which most of you on the line are, you'll be faced quite often with a bit of a paper nightmare from your clients, whether this be you know, receipts in a, in a bag or PDFs of invoices. What we aim to achieve by using Basecone is to automate this, or at least give your clients an easy way to use our apps that they can use on their phones to capture the information and send into their accountant for authorization. So we have two applications which are gonna be shown. We have a Spencer app, which is our capture app, which is where you take photographs of purchase invoices or expenses, and you can upload them straight into Basecomb. We also have our Flux application, which is our authorization app, and you can literally just swipe left or right to accept an expense or purchase invoice. So we also have efficient and controlled workflow. So we have a workflow option within the application, and this is, as I just mentioned, called Flux. So using workflow, you can push invoices out for authorization to company directors or finance departments, and there's a really easy app to allow you to authorize these. And once this is done, they will then be released automatically into the bookkeeping software. Now, Basecone is, is just a cloud application. Um, it's only ever been a cloud application um, and hasn't actually had any links to our on-premise software. So everything we're going to be doing today during this webinar is going to be real time. Um, the benefit of it, you know, being in the cloud is that it also allows you to work off any device you have, as long as it's connected to the internet and you're available to access a browser. There's also online archiving. So as all of you will know, within the county practice, once you've processed all of that information, in paper form from your clients, you then put it all back in either a bag, box or folder and send it back to them. So Basecone has a built-in archiver to save time on this, where you can just search based on the description or the supplier or the customer, and it will bring up all of, all of the relevant documents there. It also has the capability to do multiple booking rules. So these can be led by the accountancy software so if a document always needs to go to a certain nominal code, then we can start to set those up. So anytime you have an electricity bill, for example, this can be set up to your rates nominal code in the bookkeeping software. 
as I mentioned, Basecone is real time. Um, so that's where the business intelligence aspect comes in. It's real time processing. So it uses OCR and reads the document and uses that intelligence to help with archiving. So you don't have to keep going back into the bookkeeping software to find that document. And finally, easy authorization, as I mentioned, will come through via our Flux application. So yeah, why Basecone? So we have real-time processing, documents are processed into Twinfield, zero and exact, save posting rules help to create a flawless booking process. As I mentioned, 100% cloud, so you can submit these documents, invoices, authorize and submit declarations, no matter where you are. It's also remote control, so you can take full control over your document flows and prevent invoices from being paid without approval. And finally, the online archive. The documents can be securely stored in Basecone for up to 10 years. So now we're going to jump into a live demonstration of the software. So Basecone is a Walters Kluwer product. It has been for around the past six years. Um, so if you need to access the software, you can do it directly from the Walters Kluwer um, website. So you just go to walterskluwer.co.uk, click on software and go to Basecone. And there you have it, you can then choose to log in as well here. Now you can also go directly to the Basecone website and log in, or if you want, you can have it saved as a favorite, which is what I've done here, and it'll bring you straight to your login page. So as you can see from your login page, you've got a variety of different languages you need. We also have the ability to offer multi-factor authentication as well. So this is what you'll be greeted with when you come into the software. So down the middle, you have essentially a virtual invoice tray. On the side, you have the relevant different categories uh, that we'll go through later. And then you also have the settings. On the bottom, you also have a chat, which is where you can have a conversation with the Basecone support team if you need to. Now you'll notice here that I have Alum Demo set up you'll see that there's a link to Twinfield. So this is my, my company within Twinfield. I also then have a separate company here for Zero. So all the different companies you have will appear here separately. For each company, you have a unique email address. And this is one of the ways that you can get your invoices into Basecone. So currently I have these, I'm gonna clear these so you can see how real time it is. You always have to give a reason just to abandon the documents there. We have the unique email address. I'm going to send an invoice over now as if I was a client. And this will also be the same for the mango bar you can see here that there is a separate email address uh, for this company so what you would do is you would just let your clients know you're only accepting electronic invoices you would provide them with this email address and what they would do is they would send them to you via this email address and then they would appear directly in here so you can see we've now given an email saying the process has been succeeded and here we have the invoice that I've just sent over. So as you can see, real time. Now, as well as that, if your clients do come to you with you know, paper invoices, then what you can do is you can scan them in and then upload them through here. So you can just select a few like this and press open. And there you go, you can see they've all appeared in the virtual invoice tray there. Now, as I mentioned, we also have the Spencer application. Um, so I'm just going to show you a short video 
on how that works. So as you can see, you just take a photograph, make sure that it's neat, enhance it, take own, uh, well, stencil, then flatten the image, and you can then it to um, either an expenses claim or you can just send it straight away if it's a purchase invoice into Basecone and it will immediately appear in the virtual invoice tray. So now we've actually got the invoices into the software. You'll notice here that this invoice here has a three next to it as opposed to these which have a one. This is because this is a multi-page invoice. So we can see number one here, number two across here, and then the third and final one there. So if a number of your clients do come to you with multiple page invoices, you do have the ability to split. We press split, and then you can decide where you want to split. So whether you want to split off the first page, second, just the second. And if you have a large quantity, what you can do is press split per page, and that will just split it automatically for you when you press this. So now you can see that we've got three singular documents here. So now we have to decide what we're going to do with these and what we're going to tag them as before we push them over into the bookkeeping software. So you have the option to a purchase invoice, a sales invoice, cash, banks or journal, and also customizable. So customizable means that the invoice will be archived However, it won't be pushed across to the bookkeeping software. So we can label all of these as purchase invoices. Now, you also have the ability um, within the Twinfield link to assign this to a project or cost center, if you so wish. And then you also have an authorization workflow here. But we'll touch on that a little bit later. Now that they've been tagged, what we need to do is go through and actually push them across into the software. So if you come to validation overview, what you have is essentially a traffic light system. So green is ready to be pushed across, amber will need a little bit more work, and then you do sometimes get reds, which you'll just need to go in and, and sort out. So if we click into this smart agency one, what you'll do is click on details. And what this will do is it will bring up a box on the right hand side which has been populated based on the OCR um, capabilities. So what you just have to do is make sure that the boxes over on this side correspond to the information here and then just book it across. So if we go through you can see the transaction date is the 15th of the second so let's pick that up put it in the right period Invoice number as well has been picked up there, as it is here. Then also supplier. So if we click into supplier, it's picked up two different suppliers. Um, so we just need to pick which the right one is. And then we also need to decide on what the invoice description is there. So at the moment it's services, or you can either write services in there, or you can copy and paste like that just click it across again do the same on the bottom there so as well as this you have the option to make sure that this invoice isn't in a payment batch by clicking this there is a credit invoice final booking or to ignore any warnings it also tells you the total amount including the VAT and obviously the total amount of VAT now you have the ability to defer costs if you need to you can click this and defer costs and decide periods. And then finally, you also have an account code, which you can give it to. So at the moment, this is just as general rates, which we can leave it as. And again, you have the ability to assign it to either a cost center or a project. So now all of this is correct. What we need to do is push this across 
to the bookkeeping software. So what we can do is press book. And as you can see, you now get a notification saying the document has been successfully booked into our accounting system. So now I'm going to move over to Twinfield, which is the Walters Clure bookkeeping software. So again, quite a similar on screen, you have the option for the different languages. You also have your normal login password. And again, you have the option for multi-factor authentication down here. If we log in. So here Twinfield would pick up all the relevant companies. So there's 331 within this organization. Um, I primarily use the UK demo, so I've saved it as a favorite. So once we go into here, we can go to provisional transactions, purchase invoice, and go across to the last one. And here we can see we have the invoice that we've just pushed over. So it gives you the time and date that it was modified on. And then you can also drill down a little bit further. So as you can see, when you come in, all the data entry fields have been populated for you um, by, by Basecone and by the OCR. So you can see the invoice has appeared here on the right-hand side. Now, the reason that that has come up straight away is because of this little plugin here called Twincone. So you can download that for free from uh, the Google Store. And what it will do is as soon as you enter the invoice, it will bring up the relevant uh, invoice photograph next to it. Now, if you didn't have a plugin, then you don't need to worry. All you would do is click this base cone link, and it would take you to a photograph of the invoice. You also have the ability to look at the document timeline. It will tell you when it was supplied, split, authorized and booked etc and you also have the ability to download or print that if you went back to this purchase invoice you would then also have the ability uh, to make that final booking as well now if we jump back in the base code i'm going to show you how the authorization flow works so this is um, if, for example, um, an invoice is over a certain amount and you need um, someone to sign off on this, then you can set up an authorization flow. So you have three separate stages and you can have as many authorizers within each stage as you want. But I have authorization flows set up already, um, which you can do as well. So for today, we're just going to put it as Helen Flux. So again, we just have to go through and make sure everything uh, adds up. And then you can see here, because the authorization flow has been activated, not in payment batch has been grayed out. This means that if a payment run was made until this invoice has been approved, you wouldn't be able to see it. Again, we can go down to account code, just do advertising, and again, in a description. Now, what you can do is you can, as we mentioned earlier, do multiple uh, posting rules. So for example, um, you could set it up that the invoice every time says, you know, media banner or whatever relevant uh, description you needed, if it was the same every time. So now that this is ready, you can also add multiple lines as well if you need to. So now that this is ready, I'm gonna push it over to the software. And that's now been done. So now what I'm going to show you is how the authorization process looks within Basecone. So I'm going to log out of this user. I'm going to enter the software again as if I was the approver. So 
what you would do is, as you can see, it looks very similar. I have the two companies linked. I would then go down to authorization. And here you can see we have the invoice that I just sent over for authorization here. So now that I'm here, we have the option to either authorize, can change the authorizer, put it on hold, you can also reject it as well. What I'm going to do is press authorize. And now that document has been authorized and it will be pushed across into Twinfield. Again, as I mentioned, if you had more than one authorizer, it would then get pushed onto um, the next person within the process. Now, we do also have an application um, for authorizing called Flux. I'm going to show you the video here. So as you can see, all the invoices that you need to authorize will come up on the screen. And you can literally just either swipe right to approve or swipe left to reject. If you swipe down or up, you also have the ability to put that on hold or to stall it. So again, extremely useful. You'll be able to authorize wherever you are on the go. You'll also see here selected company. You have the ability to switch between companies. So if someone needs to authorize for multiple companies, they can do that within that one application. So now that, that is how it all works with Twinfield. I'm also going to quickly jump in and show you what an expenses claim would look like. You can file expense claims if you wish. If, we, if you ran your general ledger balance, for example, this is one that we've done previously. So we can go to traveling. This is an expense claim that was made. So here you can see this is the format that it would take. So you would have the expense claim here. It would tell you the total amount, what it was for, food and train. And then you can also see that there are multiple pages. If you click number two, it will actually show you the photograph of the receipt that was taken at the time. And again, with number three, it shows you the receipt for the train there. So using base cone, you can go all the way back to the initial, initial receipt, and you've also got um, all the relevant information here. So if we jump back into base cone now, now what we can do is show you how base cone works with zero. So again, you have the ability to either email this unique email address or use the Spencer application. I'm going to add in this one. I'll do a couple. And if we just refresh that, log out and log back in. There we are, they've appeared now. So again, we have to go through the same process. So we can click this enterprise one. We have to decide um, what type of invoice it is. As you can see here with zero, um, don't have the option for cash bank and journal as you did uh, with Swimfield, but you do still have the option for either a purchase invoice, sales invoice, or customizable. So if we tag this as a purchase invoice, and again, you have the option to add in an authorizer. So we'll come down to validation overview. Here we can see, again, we just need to go in and shore up all the details. So 
as you can see, the authorization flow is already there. So I'm going to show you how that works uh, within Zero as well. So here you can see we have the transaction date, uh, which is the first of the six. Uh, the invoice number is there. As this is a demo, I have used this invoice before, um, hence why we need to just change that there. And then the amount as well. It's also linked to the supplier. And then down here, you have the ability to attach an account code again. So if we type in car hire, you also don't have to know your nominal codes off by heart. You can type it in and type the words in and it will appear for you there. And again, the description, we can just copy and paste that like that. So we have this all set up. We've now also got the authorization flow in place. So what we'll do is book this. And again, that's been booked for you. So now if we move into the actual zero software, login. Now I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with with the, uh, the homepage here and the dashboard. So if we go to business, go to bills to pay, you'll see here that under awaiting approval is the enterprise car rental invoice that we just selected. So you can go in, have a look. You can see all of the relevant information over here. So now if we go back to Basecone, we have to authorize this um, in order for it to go through within zero. So we'll go back to the authorization login. Go down here. Now you can see the authorization is here and again you have the option to authorize it change authorizer or put it on hold and as for mentioned the flux application does also work with zero so if you had access to that you could just swipe right or left to um, approve it if we press authorize then if we go back into zero Go back to bills to pay. We can now see here that awaiting approval, there's nothing there as it's just been approved. It's now been moved over into the awaiting payment section there. So as you can see, everything's extremely real time um, and extremely quick. So now if we jump back into Basecone quickly, we can just touch on the archiver, which is here. We can get it from the Twinfield company. So here you could look for a supplier, customer, whether it was authorized, booking number. You have all these options to find what you needed. So if we Amazon, for example, you would see here we have a list of all the different invoices um, that have been put through the system. So again, saving you a lot of time having to trawl through filing cabinets or you know paper copies. All you need to do is just come through here and have a look through that there. So that is the that's a lot of the software done there. So what we can do is we can have a look back quickly at exactly what it is that we've seen. So with both bookkeeping softwares, both Zero and Twinfield, we've seen you know seamless collaboration and also secure document storage in the cloud. You can see just how real time the processes are and also the overview of all of your documents, whether that be in the validation overview using the traffic light system, whether that be in your virtual invoice tray, or also whether that be in the archive, you have access to all those documents. We've also shown how the authorization process works um, with the automated recognition and coding of the documents and just how quick and easy um, it is to authorize that, whether or not 
that be through the application or whether that be um, using a browser and going into the software. So now it's time um, to answer any of the questions um, we've got here. So we're going to have a look. So yes, yeah, so we've got we've got one question here, which is how good is the OCR? So the obstacle character recognition. Um, so yeah, the the OCR is is extremely good. The only time um, that it potentially may struggle is if it's say a paper invoice with handwriting and the handwriting is you know particularly scrawly or small or you know quite difficult to read then um, it may struggle a little bit but you'll also, you'll always be able to input the relevant information yourself if you needed to um, with regards to typed out invoices um, yeah it's now perfect um, another question here is do you need to have both applications um, so obviously the flux and the Spencer app. Um, at the moment, yes, the Spencer, as we mentioned, is your capture app for the expenses uh, and the purchase invoices, and the Flux is the authorization app. However, our product development team have told us that as of, I believe, the end of the summer this year, so August, September, there will be one application um, that will be able to do both, or well, all the functionalities. Um, another one here, can I use the app on my Android device? Um, yeah, you can. So you can either, um, well, you can use all the apps, yeah, both of them on your Android device. So you either go to um, the Apple Store or to Google Play and you'll be able to use um, both of those applications there. Can I be an approver and not use the web app? Yes, yeah, you, that, that is um, a possibility if you needed to be. Um, so yeah, you would be able to just have the functionality to you know approve or reject uh, invoices, expenses, and not actually have to be using uh, the application itself. And then finally, can the approval send me reminder emails as well as just checking the app? Uh, yes, it can. So if for whatever reason, you know, you miss it on the application, you will have an email address assigned um, and that email address will receive emails notifying you that there are invoices left to be authorised uh, within the software. So in terms of what's next, if you're already you know, um, an existing customer and you're looking for support, um, then obviously you can get in contact with us on the email address there or call us um, and we'd be always happy to help. Or alternatively, if you do have um, an account manager, then obviously you can reach out to them and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to assist you. If you're looking for training um, on, this, on this product, um, perhaps you've already got some of our existing products and you want this one as well, then you can obviously visit my learning portal or contact your account manager again and then finally if you're a new customer or you know a potential new customer and you'd be interested um, in using the software then what you can do is just get in contact with us there um, or email the address there so thank you for joining us um, just as a recap the webinar has been recorded um, and will be circulated to you um, after this. If there are any other questions um, that we haven't managed to answer here, um, then we will always get back in touch with you and give you the answers to that. Or alternatively, if you think of a question um, afterwards, then when the webinar recording comes out, it will have my contact details on it. So feel free. Um, just to drop me a message or give me a call um, and I'll be more than happy to give you a hand. Thanks very much for your time today.